International break or not, the show must go on. He's part of the furniture here. He's doing his thing on AFTV and all the other platforms. Cecil, as usual, big love for tuning in. What are you saying, my guy? We got a lot all good, bro. All good. All good. Happy to be here. Welcome back. Obviously, international break, so get a bit of time. So, um, yeah, man, it's good to be back on the channel. So I good. mean, appreciative for you tuning in. Obviously, for context, people, I gave this guy little to no time to ask if he could do a vid. And as usual, he's showing up, man. Hopefully, our boys show up after the international break. That's hey, actually right on brand, bro. How are you feeling about Arsenal at the moment, man? Four games, not been good. Um, yeah, we haven't won, I don't think, since the international break. Um, the last international break, that is. Um, how am I feeling? Uh, obviously, a bit. A bit deflated. I mean, man had to travel to, granted it was Preston, we won that game at Preston, then to Newcastle, then to Milan. Um, obviously, this is all, it's, it's all a blessing and whatnot, then Chelsea. Um, but it was a lot of miles, a lot of hours, a lot of travelling to see some average performances, if I'm being real. Um, Chelsea was a bit better. Um, Preston, don't really need to include, but the Newcastle game wasn't great. Um, and many and, and some others are so like so yeah it's, it's been a bit frustrating um the mood right now i think amongst the fans as well isn't in the best place i think there's a lot of div uh division between the fans whether it where it's like arteta in arteta out um and he's got he's under a lot of pressure and uh the performances they've kind of picked up a little bit but again the results aren't what i think arsenal fans are wanting especially myself i want to see us winning games i think we put ourselves under a massive pressure now f until the next international break which i believe is in the new year it'll be in the new year maybe march i think march yeah long way away but i just think you have to i said the thing the last stream we did that you kind of got to do it in chunks um and look at it between in each international break and then if not you go from this one to the end of the year and i think now he's under a lot of pressure to win a lot of those games and not drop any points if i'm being real um maybe some draws but definitely not um any more losses but i'm okay i'm I, i'm not for for to round off the the question and for the answer is just like I'm not where some fans are where their heads are completely gone and it's, and it's like, get him out and we're not going to win nothing this season. And I'm not at like, like a stupid, optimistic, delusional state where it's like, oh no, we're 100% still going to, I still think we'll, we'll win the league. But I just don't, I'm not going to be the one that's going, oh, everything's rosy at Arsenal because, you know, Edu, Edu going, there, there's so many things that I'm like, oh, what's happening here? Um, yeah, Edu's leaving, um, Obviously, that, that was a shock. And then, like, the performances, obviously, injuries and suspensions and whatnot, that comes with football. But there's a few things I'm like, oh, how do we get a grip of what's happening? So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm in the, mid I'm in the middle ground, which people will say fence sitting or whatever. I'll call that's where I'm at. I don't think you can be anything other than a fence sitting. Like, granted, you know, if you are providing balance, but you're still optimistic, you're choosing to, you know, comment on the negatives, but focus on the positives. And if you're choosing to acknowledge there's some positives, but focusing on the negatives, that's fair enough. Naturally, as you know, football's an emotional sport. In your line of work, you interview fans and you're on shows week in, week out. You've seen the hyper opinions. Really, it is, whether you're positive or negative or neutral, it's all emotional. We love this football club. There's certain men that will leave their girlfriends and cheat on their wives before they ever dare to not watch Arsenal Football Club again. So naturally, football's illogical. But you mentioned that yeah, de there about you still think we win the league. You know, what makes yeah. you think that? Because we're kind you know of third of a three-horse race. You know what, do you know what it is? Obviously, I'm uh, doing one of the things I hate when fans do. Like, I've made an opinion at the start of the season and said, this will be our year. I'm kind of sticking to it. It may be a bit naive, um, but I just think there's still... Do you know what it is? I just still think there's a long way to go. I don't, I don't, I feel like... There is. 27 I, games. So yeah, exactly. There's a lot of games to go. And I, and I get it. People go, ah, oh, but this time in, in this era in football, you can't drop this many points and in this amount of games and all that and win the league. Okay, I hear that, but I know how early on it is. Uh, to be fair, if we lost to Chelsea, my whole mood would be different. My whole, I even said this. I said, if we win, we're still in it. If we draw, I'm indifferent. I don't really know. If we lose, we're out of, out of it, even though it is very early on. But right now, we drew. I'm indifferent. I'm just going to stick to my my original opinion of when I was at the start of the season, that Arsenal can go on and still can win this league. And the reason why, because being indifferent, I'm not going to go to the negative side of say it's all done. Um, I'm going to lean towards what I think is hope, is, is copidism or whatever it, people say. Um, I'm going with that because I'm a fan. I go week in, week out. I want to believe. I want to be able to have some sort of faith. So I'm still holding on. I still, like I said, it's early on is the main thing. I think 
depending on what happens in this next period, we can really decide whether you're really going to be in the conversation because Liverpool is doing tremendous things and I've, I've given them so much credit online already. Man City aren't doing great, but they're still in it. So, and, and we know what City can do. So I just think until I see this next period of games and fixtures up until, I'm going to say the new year, um, and a lot of people always go to January window. They say, well, we'll see what we do in January window. But um, I'm going to go to the new year and then kind of see where we're at. But it's, it's for me, it's not over, man. I, I, again, I'm, I'm, I see the hyperbolic um, fans. I see, I see it different. I see the, you know, the small, the micro fans that you know that kind of are all the way the other way. Like, no, we're still, we can still win the league. It's comfortable for us. We can still, we can win potentially win the Champions League and all those things. I speak to those fans as well. But I'm kind of just in the middle ground of yeah, being the presenter of just, I'm, I'm still believing, but I'm very aware that this could go left very quickly. We're, we're not far from the point where I'm like, I'll never be the one screaming our tear out the loudest, but I can see where some of them are coming from and the mistakes he's made, whether it's the transfer window, which I still don't think there's, apart from a striker, I'm still not, again, one, one side completely in the fact that, oh, he really messed up in the transfer window. I think we needed a striker. I think every fan can agree to that, but some people are saying a little bit more than that. I'm kind of, I'm not on that side as much as just the striker. I was, it made, that was an issue for me. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see I can see the other side and what the questions they're asking to Mikel Arteta. Can he get over the line? You know, what, what's going on with the style of play? I don't recognise this Arsenal compared to last season. There's so many things I can kind of align myself with, but I'm not the one going to be screaming Arteta out right now because there's still a long way to go. I think it's a bit crazy. I think in May, there'll have to be some uncomfortable conversations. But do you really I mentioned it earlier? Yeah? Do you really think there's pressure on Arteta? Because obviously, fans, we want to win. We've been bigged up. We've been bigging up the team. Obviously, we kissed the Premier League like success twice, but not actually got over the line. Before the season started, he got a new deal. Some would say, yes, on one hand, it gives Arteta and the club clarity. You know the manager's going to be here. Some would say, obviously, with what we've been facing and the job, maybe that tells you, you know, where the ownership are at and whether we achieve what we want or not is kind of not irrelevant relevant but it's not they're not as hungry as us so like do you really think he's under pressure the new deal is a good thing to point at if i'm being real he's his he's, he's extension um but in when it comes to managers i'll be real extensions where it, it doesn't really mean anything when when you when if things go really bad and they and people want you out you go out regardless you get out regardless of the contract but for me under pressure yes from but it depends from who <laughs> that's where the, it depends who's pointing the pr pointing the pressure i think um, there's external pressure not necessarily internal yeah i think the fans for a man to say there's a five-year process and all this and we're in his fifth year um full year i think and and he's, he's openly said that this club deserves to be winning trophies we deserve success this, that's where the last day of the season be. last year what he said exactly exactly he's his final talk to the fans like he said i don't want you to be i don't expect you to be um you know happy and expect this to be a successful as a see as a success because it's not but you know we know where we need to be and we'll be there hopefully we're supposed to be this season so i think you put your pressure on yourself i think you've said it from yeah like i said True. the process was five years so you, if he has to be under pressure that's that's why it's, it's a fact that again the nature like, of the job. yeah I, i've screamed i don't like i said i won't scream i'll take her out because i'm a big fan of him and i think he's, he's a genius in some senses but you've also said things that i also believe in and you've said yourself so i have to hold you to your own Exactly. Own level of, 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 of expectation and, and and um yeah and standards so yeah he's under pressure and, and i think right now because i feel it when like i said at the chelsea game I, I the fans were coming out of the game speaking to me like oh he's done someone's saying listen it's still it's basically what i'm saying here, it's still early blah blah, blah. But i'm telling you if we lost that game because there's a majority of fans that are in the exact same position i am we it's too early to really say anything. I don't really know where I'm at with the manager. It's not terrible, but it's not amazing. Results so, dictate the narrative, 100%. Exactly. So I think if the result went a different way at Chelsea, I think those Arteta routers that are a minority, minority for now, I'd say, but are quite loud, would have got even more louder. And um, that's the correct English, even louder. Sorry, not even more louder, even louder. So I think, yeah, he's under pressure, especially it comes towards, like you said, in May. There'll be big questions. I even think, do you know what? Bun that. January, there'll be questions. Because if you go into a January window where you think you can get by by just not making any signings and expect Arsenal to go on and win, win the Premier League title, I promise you there'll be fans in uproar. Because 
when you haven't addressed a striker, don't sort of get it twisted. It's not just this summer. He hasn't addressed a striker situation from way back. Okay, I think he hasn't really Gabriel, signed attackers like that. And when he has, they ain't really banged in comparison really to the defenders. And whatnot. Even Gabriel Jesus, if I'm being real, no one saw Gabriel Jesus sign it as a bagsman. They never said, right, yes, we're getting that striker. We're giving we're him a platform. Let's see what he can do. Exactly. We we never we never saw him as that striker. So even that was a bit underwhelming at the time. Fair enough. He done well. He was playing with the false nine and and whatnot. It worked. We come. We came second in the end. We didn't win obviously the Premier League, but it worked in a sense. So it pushed us back up there. But now we are really looking for someone who who can who can well, bring us the trophy. It's not even about make a difference, get us back playing properly, whatnot. It's nothing about we've, we've we're at that stage already. We've got back to need a playing playing where we need we need we need silverware. We need the the big game player. So. I think January there'll be pressure on him as well. I, I think wait until May will obviously give maybe the final nail in the coffin. But if you don't do the right business in January, um, especially when you haven't got your sporting director there and a guy who, who was involved massively in, in bringing players in, you better bring a replacement in and make sure he's getting it right as well because you're going to need to. You're going to need to. And, and and the thing with me, Arteta speaks so much about fans and energy and transmitting and all that. You, it, it comes from you. It comes from what decisions you make. You gave a fan to believe in. So we have to, like you said, we have to hold you to the same standard you set. And for me, if we, uh, like you kind of said, yeah, I think there's some people that are just too far right with the Mikel Arteta yeah. thing and do a bit too much. I think on the left, there's some people that move like everything he touched turns to gold. Now me, I think there's pretty concerns. I think, you know, there's a bigger question to ask as, as a club where we want to win stuff. But isolated to what Mikel Arteta can control, there's been a lot of L's. I mean, a lot of W's, but there's also been a lot of self-inflicting L's. Yeah. Let's let's be brutally honest. Like you can't big up the man. Say he's innovative, like you said, and I agree. I think he is in many ways a not maybe not so much now, but a tactical genius. You can see he's going to be a big a good coach. But if I rate yeah. you that much and believe in you, whether you succeed at Arsenal or not. I have to hold you to them standards. I'm sure, obviously, he's not Pep, but I'm sure City are asking Pep, what's going on right now? Because they haven't won in four. Or the same with Klopp. So it's it's a techie one. You mentioned it there, yeah. Do you think we need to boost something in January? And do you think we will? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have to. We have to. We have to. Do, do you know what it is? Oh, I've been doing a lot of, um, obviously, uh, this is my job, um, documenting and covering Arsenal. I've been doing a lot of, like, just, I've had some bit of time off actually, funny enough, and just doing some deep research on I don't know, loads of videos, TIFO, all those little things that talk about the style of player Arsenal doing and whatnot, and how we've it's hard to I don't want to say regress. Well, it is regression uh, from last season when we were slapping teams after that Dubai trip, fives, four, six nils, right? I was looking at like the free flowing football what was playing a conference we had in the team. So what we do now when it's like Havertz drifts to the right and helps out Bakayo Saka. We haven't obviously had Martin Odegaard, so the 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 glue or the or the 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 cog in that middle to link the, the nucleus the of our team on the yeah exactly because that's gone I was thinking okay cool we, we don't look as attractive he's he's the he's, he's strengthening defense so he's looking he's more concerned about you know losing goals and 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 not well yeah losing if we goals, can't score don't losing concede games, kind of yeah thing. basically not losing yeah losing points by not winning games right so he's like let's just show up the defense so that makes you more defensive team I know he's been criticised uh, to, uh, tap out or uh, whatever pile of pulis and all them stupid stuff. Stoke and City football, football. One like, minute it was Klopp, um, and then it's sorry, it was Pep, and now it's Jose. And yeah, the goal goes me. Like, and people love to, to make narratives because, like, sometimes I, I, I'm sorry, I'm darting between points here. No, like, go ahead, man. This is why you're here, man. I want to hear everything. Trust me, like the dark arts and how people got annoyed at that. But one, there was a, there was years where it was too soft and we had no cojones. And now we do dark arts and we're quite an imposing team. We're right. massive with six foot. And people want to make make criticisms about that. Then like last season, again, we're battering teams. Everyone thinks, oh my God, look, Arsenal are back. They're going to win it. And then now we're playing defensive football to kind of show out games and whatnot. And people are getting annoyed at that because we're not playing free-flowing football, the Arsenal football that we know. But I actually honed in on that because I, for, for me as an Arsenal fan, I take pride in the way we play. Um, that's I, honestly I, lo I love when we play free flowing football. So I looked at it and I said, like, going forward, there is an issue. It might just be Martin, Martin, Martin Odegaard not being there. That might be it. I don't know yet until we see him. Nah, man, because when he was here, we were still struggling. I think Arteta has gone the other way, a bit like what you said in that yeah. they criticized us for being soft. I think we need a balance. I wouldn't say last season we was playing amazing football, but I think there was kind of a balance. And as you know, football's a trade off. If you want to be a bit better defensively, you're going to lose some percentages in the attacking third. And for me personally, I hear it with Arteta, but I think the better we've got in terms of fighting for a title, you've kind of focused 
a bit too much on that. I don't want to be naive, but it's like we're not putting our best foot forward in the final third. Like, you know yourself, you've played football. You know probably the best attacking position, give or take maybe Odegaard, for Arsenal at the moment, and I think Aubameyang said it, it's on the wings. That's where you get the yeah. freedom. Havertz is a facilitator. Whether we can score or not, we're not creating chances. And I don't know how you feel or anyone feels. I'm not saying our attackers are the best things since sliced bread, but you could argue when you've got Martin Odegaard, Saka, Jesus, Trossard, mm -hmm. the rest of them, we should be doing a bit better in the final third, man. It's almost like there's been times, don't get twisted, where we've defended. We might have four shots for me, one on target, and we've scored, and the, those margins have gone with us, gone for us. But I do think there's issues with the way Arteta is playing. Do you think he's focused a bit too much on the defensive yeah. aspect? And that's yeah. kind of harmed us. 100%. That's, that's what kind of what I was getting to, is the fact that he's, he's, he's very systematic, which is fine, because systems nowadays is part of football. I see it in, in every team. But we aren't, yeah, I think, We've gone so heavily defensive, even with the side, even Michael Moreno, who, who, yeah, he scored a header and, and he wins balls and yeah, but it's very defensive minded of sense of dual in the air, dual, yeah, beat wins, it wins good uh, duels high up the pitch. It's all about, you know, getting a possession and kind of keeping the ball. And I see it watching Arsenal. We keep the ball, we go side to side quite a lot. We're not really, the impetus isn't as forward as much as it needs to be. But I think there is a space for it. From what I've, what I've sat down research, there's a space for it, but it does need a new sign. And then, hi, hi, hi. My, Martinelli is not the not the Martinelli of old right now, so I think there's listen Havertz we're gonna get onto as well because I also think that's a take us away, man. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even gonna say these are problems because they've done well, but I'm saying we need to up upgrade if we really wanna really kick on and win this title. Because the reason why I say it is because I think we keep the ball well, but when it comes to in behind runs or speed going down the wings, from recently Martinelli hasn't had what the impact he used to have. He the decision making is horrible. In real. And, yeah, he didn't step in and beat his man with, for pace anymore, in my opinion. I've seen it many times where I've seen him do the one-on-one the -on -one runs. He doesn't get the goal from it when he's going on against the keeper. He's not clinical enough. And then also, when he's being run out, he's not always winning the race, which I used to see he always does. And then the players we brought in to kind of replace that, Trossard has no speed. So, not no speed, that's harsh. He's not as quick. He's not a winger. <laughs> he doesn't have the speed to He's use not as rapid. In. He's yeah, not he a 10, according that. to some fans. He struggled there as well recently. Even hey, for man, Belgium I, think, the other day. I think he's quite a good finisher. I think he can be an intelligent, he's an intelligent player. But when it comes to getting the ball in behind and, and breaking out, maybe counter-attacking or when we're keeping the ball really well, we need to find that option over the top. He's not the one for that. And then Sterling as well. I haven't seen enough of him to really make decision of... Basically yeah, what do you make of... Uh, carry on with what you're saying, but I want to ask you on. as well as what you're going to say. What have you made of the Sterling thing? Because he ain't we ain't seen much. Yeah, I'm disappointed if I'm being real. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed one in Mikel Arteta because you've signed him and you didn't use him at all before the international break so we didn't really see him we didn't see him in the champions league game at all which would have been in my opinion would have been smart to use him because you weren't going to see him play against chelsea the same thing, bro. um so i was surprised didn't use him at all and then when i have seen him I, i've i've openly said this on AFTV and i made it very clear he doesn't do the defensive work yeah and it's very clear arteta doesn't like that very clear because for example against bournemouth he came he came on right obviously he got taken off after the red card but what I, I analysed him because I'm going to be biased. Jamaican man, hold tight. 100%. I, I knew he was going to get here. I, I wanted to do well. There is Jamaica tax there, I'll be real. So I watched him against Bournemouth, yeah. And what happened was he was uses the outlet and at times I'm going forward pretty well. But coming back, I saw Ben White go mad at him. No way. I don't think it, would have, it wouldn't have picked up on camera because it wouldn't have. It was, it was when the ball was... Is after the Ben White recovered back and won the ball back and, and went to the other side of the pitch. And he he's was obviously just, said, FNL, help me, he's man. Shouting, he's shouting at Sterling, like, brother, I need you to get. And I get that because Saka does it. Martinelli does it amazingly well. I, I commend him for his defensive work. Saka also does it. Sterling, I can see. And maybe that's just because, you know, he's, he's an experienced player now. He's won it all, whatever, cool. He doesn't do the going back as well as the other players. And I think for Arteta's system and for what Arteta needs in this team, you need to be able to defend as well as going forward. And, and do you know what? I know this for fact because Bakaya Saka on CBS, when he was talking to Thierry Henry, Thierry Henry said, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this on our last stream. He said about, oh, you know, you work hard coming back and, and blah, blah, blah. You do more than, you know, back in the day, we didn't have to do it as much, but you guys really do it. And he's like, thank you for bringing this up because Arteta demands this of us that we have to work as, as hard going forward as we do going back. So I know for a fact that is something that Sterling hasn't got right now from what I've seen in Arsenal. So I can see why Arteta hasn't been playing him. But then again, I, I don't know. Sometimes you still need to use him to potentially get the attacking field. You bought the guy, man. Like, so you should well, have yeah, known exactly. what he's about in terms of that, if I'm honest. Or you got him on loan better yet. Yeah, you got him on loan. And to be fair, it was last minute. And I, and, and I, and I think 
I don't know. I think they feel they can probably coach into him. Maybe they can. There's still long. Listen, there's still a season to go. It's still early days. And maybe Arteta is working on his defensive attributes more. But I know for a fact Arteta is very stubborn when it comes to, listen, I need you to do the same amount of work going back as forward. That's why he has these young players. That's why they all kind of believe in it. So I just think Sterling might be a mental place where he's like, Meh, yeah, I will half-heartedly. But I can actually see that when he's on the pitch. So that's one thing. That's the thing on Sterling. And also going forward, like I mentioned, I think that left side, we all look at a striker, but if we can get a speed demon to relieve pressure or when we're on the counter, get in behind defences, I promise you that's where, for me, is where Arsenal can win games. Because I see us keep the ball in the, in the middle of the pitch and on the right side, we keep it so well. We suffocate teams from possession. We press them high. But it's that little change of gameplay, which he's actually done quite a lot this season. Going that long. final action. Exactly. If we can get someone who's quicker than, sadly, what Martin Elias is now and then I promise you that'll be an improvement and will get us over the line in certain aspects. And also, yeah, we need a striker, but everyone's talking about it. So there's not really much for me to keep going on about. We need a striker. Um, listen, Havertz has done well. He can still find a place in this team. I just don't think he should be a number one. I think he should be, he can be a really good number two for Arsenal um, in, in, in the number nine position. So yeah, I think that is to be looked at, but I, the, the main key for me is that left side. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know who the I I still don't know. I, I saw them being linked to Sane and that this week, and and also being linked to Sane and all that. And and I Was think they Kudus are as well. I'm having that and Kudos as well. Yeah, see, see, I'm glad they're looking at wingers. I know priority. But we always hear this, bro, be, man. I know, I know, I know. But I just think nowadays, I don't know. We're, we're so reliant on Saka. The most sellers of this world are yes, they're anomalies, but they're wingers. But they 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 contribute so much. They're the big players for these teams. And, and they had part. Mane as well when they exactly. were doing their thing. That's another way to get around not having a prolific bagsman if you are going to persist with Havertz up front. This is, this is what I'm saying. And the, the reason why I think I'm, I'm leaning more to wingers as well, because I think the system just, it just, it, it screams out for it. I think the, the striker position gets nullified. And, and maybe the reason why I'm also leaning towards wingers because I've seen Havertz of late. He doesn't play in the number nine. He doesn't play between the defenders as a natural striker. He drifts over. You don't create right chances. Now. So even if we got Jokerez and these men, they were not necessarily going to be bagsmen based on what I'm seeing. Exactly, Deludi. You'd have to change. Arteta would have to change his system to benefit those players. And right now, that we, what we see with City and Haaland. Well, Pep and Haaland, but yeah, when he brought him in. Go. There you go. So the system I think Arteta has currently benefits the, the uh, wide players. Um, but right now, sadly, I don't think they're at the level we need them to be. They need to be at a higher level. Um, Smart Lily's key for that. Saka's still at a quite a good level. But if I take it back to the season where I've seen them both thrive in the 15, 16 goals, Martin Lily got 16. Uh, what well, year that was? Yeah, crazy. We need that sort of level. Um, we get that. I think we're in a very good position. But right now, the way we're playing, hey. Chai, it's not there right now. You're right, man. And that's where I, I you know, I, I I agree with you with Kai Havertz. And I think Kai Havertz might become a conundrum because for me, I, I don't know how you feel, but I want to upgrade. But I think Havertz has shown me enough that you can be part of this squad. Of yeah. course, if you sign Jokerez, Isaac, whatever have you, naturally, they're going to be the number one. But from what I've seen, what Havertz is doing, I think you could do a, your, your thing in terms of fighting for that spot. The issue with Havertz is naturally, you might think, well, oh, if you've got a striker that's playing week in, week out, he might go back into midfield, which me and you have spoken about right. that you spoke exactly we don't really want to go back through there in it and i agree with, with what you're saying about the winger in that in an ideal world you want kai there doing his thing you want a bad boy striker you want saka doing what he's doing you obviously want someone that's putting up saka numbers and maybe some people off the bench if not at least one of the two which i actually i agree with you because i think the wide men, I think that's where it is. I think if anybody's got some sort of freedom, it's the wide men. I don't really think Martinelli's got as much freedom as Saka because he has to hold the whip. Now, yeah. I love Martinelli, as you know, but I am actually at that point where, yes, you might not have left backs and central midfielders and all of that <laughs> jazz. But, bro, it's your decision-making, yeah. guys. It's you. It's you now. Like Even in the Chelsea game, I don't want to be harsh because you scored, but you had another chance. On the topic of summer signings, yeah. yeah. Because we've talked about it. We've indirectly talked about it. I want to ask you on Mikel Moreno because I must admit, for me, I think there's too much extremes. I agree with what you're saying in that he's a good profile to have as a squad, but not a yeah. difference maker per se. I think he was good against Chelsea. I think he was. people gassed him and said you're a Xhaka replacement and then you're onto him. And then I, I just don't think people have been fair. I think the only times I think he's been poor is when the whole team's been poor. But where are you at with Moreno? Because we oh, actually yeah. look like we might score when he came on against Chelsea. I'll be real. 100%. 100%. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't give you any... Um difference in, in, in the argument you just kind of said. I think there's too many extremes. I think 
he had a bad game. I think when he came on, I don't know if he started. He came on against Bournemouth, and and fans were just like, yeah, he, on they, to him. He started at Bournemouth, and he said, yeah, I saw fans going mad. He turns like a double decker bus. What He's is slower than granite and all and of that stuff? I was like, man, the man's just land. He just reached, and he had him the injury. Just reach. As well. Like, and, and and I'm not saying him just reach. Like, oh, he's he's unreal. Like, give him. To, I'm like, don't, bro, let man fucking bend in a little piece. Like, give him uh, a chance. And, and you know what it is, yeah? It's funny because obviously I watch a lot of football podcasts and and, and people talk about, um, they spoke about other players like, who are they talking about? Like, I think maybe Graven Birch and and how how he needed time to bed into Liverpool and now look at him. Look at him and now. Then, exactly. And I was like, cool, look at him now. Then people will be like, okay, but Kai Sado, when he came to Chelsea, he, he didn't hit the ground running. Um, and I was like, yeah, but then they went to price tag, which is a big factor. 100 million for Kai said you expect to hit the ground running. And I was like, is that fair to say? Yes, Declan Rice, when he came to Arsenal for a record fee, there wasn't time for man to bed in. I'll be real. And, and I, I think that's fair. Like we had to, I had to say to him, we had to say, look, brother, get get going. And he did, he did. Fair play to Declan Rice. When you get that price tag, you have that much pressure. You have to, and you're you're known as an elite midfielder. You've got to kind of hit that, hit the ground running. Mikel Moreno, fair enough. He's He's a Euro winner. And I'll be honest, the fee weren't massive, but give him a bit of time. There, there's qualities there. I've seen enough to say he, he can be a player in this in this midfield. He's he's gonna he's not a bad player. I think what it is, fans like you said aligned him with Granite Xhaka, and then they also said, look, especially the fans I spoke. Remember, I think I said this on this on this pod before as well. When in our strongest midfield, all the fans were saying Mikel Moreno plays as Partey. Like there was no converse. As soon as he's fit and ready. That Party was, was a done. straight swap. Party's done. And, and, and I was like, I remember saying like, I don't know. I don't know about that actually. But they were like, nope, trust me. I remember Turkish, James, everyone, actually not even just them. Everyone I spoke was like, as soon as he's fit, he'll be the starting midfielder. Now, Party's on good form. He's been really well. He had a good run of games and people aren't screaming for Mikel Marina to start. But I think he will eventually take that place because he has got the qualities. I've seen him, especially at Newcastle. He, he in tight areas. He's one of our better players in a, yeah, another crap day, if I'm honest. He keeps the ball well, scored a header not too long ago as well. Obviously, he is an aerial threat. I just think, like you said, you, you, you honestly spot on with what you said. People just went a bit too far one way and a bit too far the other. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with him. Obviously, the jury's still out. I still need to see more, but I'm happy. I'm not... He's not a problem for me, right? There's now. a lot of problems. He's not one yeah, of them, if I'm honest. He's, he's not someone I point the finger at and say, You're the reason why this thing ain't working. No way, not you, no way, no way, no way. And 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 you know what? I've been a player like it does take time to to come into a you're coming from a different league, just to bed in a little bit. And yes, there'll be examples where players do just drop in straight away, but give him a bit, give him a little bit of time. Just give him a little bit. And and even if you are giving him a little bit of time, see what you've seen so far and say, Oh. Are you really the issue here? Because I promise you, he, he shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. That. Everyone you look at in that team and you look at Arsenal, you shouldn't be putting your finger at him and saying, this is the reason why we're not what we're doing last season or we're not winning games. So, yeah. I'm I all right. I think you're banging the money, bro. I think you're banging the money. Obviously, defence wins titles, goals score, get, goals win games, but it's the midfield. I think the wider discussion is how Arteta has assembled the midfield. I'll be real. Like, I like Arteta. I like the fact that he's almost, it's like an 11 players, but there's a mini team and they all interject. You know, as you mentioned earlier, Havertz is pulling out to the right, dropping inside. The def the wingers are putting in a defensive shift. Where you look at what Mikel Arteta has done in midfield, obviously, there's no contingency plan for Martin Odegaard in a creative and defensive kind of aspect. He's not blood and evil. And I think it's got nothing to do with Ethan. I think it's because Mikel Arteta is not looking for creativity first. Or you would play Ethan. Yeah. It's all the other aspects. And I think where you look at the midfield, I'm not saying don't make, don't change Rice, don't develop Rice, don't do all of that because he's improved. But you, for devil's advocate's sake, you've taken a, a top class, world class, household name number six. You're making him at eight. You're making part A, who's doing quite well, but it's evidence falling off physically. You're making him play right back in central midfield. And even part A is kind of the linchpin of our midfield. You're taking him out. You're making him Reino, like you mentioned the Bournemouth game when I watched it again one minute he's he's the lot he's the deepest six then he's joining the press you it, it's, I think the wider discussion is how Arteta at this moment is assembling the midfield and for me it's the profile I like Moreno and what he can bring to the table I think you're a level raiser not necessarily a regular starter and whatnot obviously form dictates it you've got an aging party you've got Rice who's at eight or a six I think we're missing that Santi Cazola that Ces Fabregas yeah. that line breaker but it's neither here nor there kind of thing if I'm honest with you I wanted to ask you because we've indirectly been going over it yeah you see if Liverpool under onslaught wins the title how do you look at Arteta because I'm sure you've been asked that because all the stuff about processes and you need time and while I don't want to draw too many conclusions on Liverpool 
I don't want to say they're perfect, but at the end of the day, they're putting in performances. So it's like a lot of the arguments at Arsenal are redundant, bro. If he wins uh, this question, he's slapped, he would have already matched up as well. In the face so many times this week. This question has literally RKO'd me out because, <laughs> firstly, firstly, yeah, if he does do that, huge achievement, brother. Like, I uh, like, I don't know if it is it anomaly potentially. Um, I think back in the, the who's won in the first season of the Premier League? Did Sir Alex? No, he didn't. Um, did. oh, Short, sure, yeah, someone has I, done I it. Someone's done it. Someone's done it. Because I remember, I think I did some research on this as well. But anyway, first, it's a huge achievement. One, if City don't get charged and whatnot, and and he does it with them still being who they are, massive. Beats us to it as well, which be will be mad. Less money spent as well. Did only got Chiesa, who's not Chiesa, been a yeah, been really been most of the time. If that happens, bro, yes, like it's peak. It's peak for uncomfortable it's, conversations. It's peak, it's peak for a lot of teams. It mainly, it will be mainly us. Mainly us will be will be getting the point in the finger out. Of course, of course, because we're we're gonna get we'll get absolutely obliterated by rival fans. But rightly so, if I'm honest. Yeah, and and and, and like I but like I said, credit to him because that will be the biggest. It'll be huge Fact. achievement, huge achievement. So. But yeah, I would be questioning a lot of things. I'll be annoyed, very annoyed. I'll be like, how can man just roll in and do this? Granted, the Liverpool team's still a good team, but I honestly thought there'll be a drop-off, a massive one. So I'd have to just take my hat off and say, fair. I'd have, have to hold a lot of smoke. We would have to hold a lot of smoke, and rightly so. Would I question Mick Arteta? Of course, we'd have to. You're talking about five-year plans and processes where man comes in and just does that. However, and I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, back Mikel too much if it does happen. But I just, I also do think where he brought Arsenal to where it is now, I will also say well done and thank you to Arteta. For How that. far does that go though, bro? Because I'm like you and I have I have to check myself when I say that. I'm like, because a lot of fans <laughs> do say that. Like, he, sure. you have taken us from the trenches, which is great. And I applaud you, you know. There, there's a heartbeat in the team. And, you know, I know people yeah, yeah, yeah. people post fun at Mikel so. Arteta for the dog called win and all them kind of stuff. You've de developed a winning culture, but you haven't won. But, now the yeah. conversation is getting into the club. We've got ready. We've put on a nice cologne. We've driven to the dance. If the Premier League was the rave, we need to get in. Yeah, Have you yeah. got your ID? Have you? Can you get in VIP? Ooh, can you be yeah. like, oh, Cecil? Can we get Q jump? Can you win it now? Yeah, yeah. Well, that well, that'll be that'll be the that'll be the listen. Love for like I said, I wouldn't if Ar if Arnie sort won in the first season, I'd say okay, I'll take it. Might be time for you to to potentially look. Like, is he the guy that's fixed it up for another manager to but, do? Imagine there you, this. This is what I'm getting leaning on to. I would still be respectful though, because I think fans, if that happened, yeah, because of the smoke Liverpool fans and other fans would give us, I think it'd be very toxic around Arsenal. The fans would be going in on our town. I won't be doing that. I'll be saying, listen, brother, respectfully, fact, I am very great. Bro, he gave me some, uh, like, the love back. In the same way you rubbed out Tierney, Ramsdale, out. Smith Rowe, maybe you've taken us as far as you can. Level, and, and, and even still, like, a bit of, uh, this is a bit of a, a mad statement, but, Klopp might have done that for slot, obviously not intentionally, but like he's got them to a he's got a, a, a an amazing team there. Let's be real, he had an amazing team there. I think Granted, next year's a problem with the contracts, if anything. Yeah, for Liverpool. Exactly. So really, he got he got the 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 final bit of juice out of that Liverpool team at the right time. Granted, because of last season, in my opinion, Liverpool fell off. That's why I was like, he he he's Klopp's left at the right time. He's kind of thrown a slot underneath the bus by going in at this time. There's a rebuild however, job without a doubt at Liverpool. There you go. But however, it might have been a really good time now because he's kept on to hold of those players. You might get this season out of them. Then next season, once all the contract, once the players, I'll be honest, once they start to leave in that, then you will see what this Arnie slot season should have been their first season compared to what we're seeing now. But yeah, like I said, I'm happy for Arteta if if. For what he's done, but if Arnie sort wins it in his first season, absolute mockery and embarrassment. But I also want to caveat it by saying, man, we've been there, yeah. We've been top of the Premier League at this stage. 200 odd days. Thank you very much. 248. We've been comfy there, yeah. On top of that, as well, because I saw this in my Facebook memories, was also top of the Champions League. It was group stage at the time, but top of our Champions League group stage group as well. So We've been in this because uh, Liverpool. I don't think they're top match now. The Champions. I think they started. Are they? Give me one second. Watch actually. I'll check Do you think, man? Um, I don't know if, if they were. I know they're top of the Champions League group as well as the. Um, yeah, they are. So the top of both, right? So I, we've been granted. It's not the full Champions League group. But it was part of our group stages. We were top of that group stage and the Premier League. And I remember being like top of two trees around the Christmas period as well. 
um, top of the table, top of the two trees, yeah. So we've been there and we hadn't won both of them. So context, take time. It's a long season. However, if he does it, if he wins the Premier League, boy, I actually might have to hibernate. And I don't normally hide from nothing, but fuck, you know. I'd have to applaud Liverpool, man. I don't think they've been amazing for 11 games. I actually feel when you go into the game against Arsenal, if you flip, flop the, if you flip the context is around how, you know, Arsenal had injuries, we was there for the taking. If we say that was Liverpool, I think the talking points would have been very different. I don't think they're perfect. I don't think they're as amazing as everyone's talking about, but I don't expect them to. Arsenal's come in, you know yourself, as a manager, you can't come in and change and everything. Re drastically. Change, yeah, rebuild exactly. So he's obviously taking the clock thing, like you said, put his own little working practices and he's, and he's running with it and I think they're doing quite well and they deserve to be where they are and you know I don't know if they sat there in August and said we're going to win the league but either way the results dictate the narrative they've got themselves in the conversation a bit like us in the first year where we fought for the league where my issue with Arsenal and, and well specifically Arteta because I'm not sure Liverpool fans necessarily believe in those above and think they're doing what they need to do to get them back why I would get at Arteta is because Arsenal has taken advantage of a situation granted as you said which is very valid there's a rebuild players are getting on players could leave all of that stuff but they've had an opportunity they've taken it and I actually feel Arsenal we've had a sweet spot in these last two years granted this is the the first year City have kind of had a proper wobble we're not doing anything like that yeah, yeah. but they've that's, taken that's advantage annoying. exactly like we could have had maybe I'm you know I would have loved one but if I'm harsh we could have had two Premier League trophies or it definitely won last year we missed out by two points whatever happens in the future it is what it is, but we would have taken advantage of such. So that's where my issue with Arteta controlling certain variables and where you look at Onslaught, I'm sure he's won the Dutch league or certain things. So mm -hmm. as much as I think experience is overrated, I do wonder, you know, him having some experiences prior to Arsenal, it makes a difference. I want to talk about Edu with you, bro. Like, what did you make of him leaving? What do you think the fallout is? If you know, who do you think replaces him? And also, am I? this is just me, yeah, but as we both said, I, we do consider Mikel Arteta a tactical genius. There's many things to like about him and there's many things to improve, right? But, and I'm not comparing Mikel Arteta to Arsene Wenger, but if we assume he's Wenger, we need, I think we need a David Dean. I think you look at the Kai Havertz thing, who's done all right. Could, if you had that David Dean, could he have went, yeah, Havertz could be good, but maybe that money could go towards this sort of striker. And we're not having certain conversations we've had in this 36 odd minutes. Yeah, I just, oh, this one tough me. By the way, it was Jose Marino, I think, won it in his first season. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jose as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, four. Yeah. Um, so I just checked that because I was, I remember, I knew, I thought it was. Anyway, the Edu thing. It caught me by surprise, but actually that one was... Caught everyone by surprise. Yeah, that one went a bit left field. I know Robbie mentioned about, you know, this that link to... Um, um, oh, what club is he got? Is he, is, he, is he going to? The Nottingham Forest and the multi-club oh, model. Me. Yeah, the multi-club model that he's taken over was rumoured in the summer and they turned it down. Um, but I don't know, the next person... I've seen some names floating around... Um, Oh, there was a whole Spanish host of names, man. Leverkusen, West Ham guys. Yeah, there was that Monaco Spanish done. Well, that's the that brother. Spanish. Yeah, he signed Mikel Arteta. Um, he signed Mikel Arteta as a player at the time. And it, there's, there's a lot of links to this player, that, that this guy who seems like the perfect fit. But if I'm being real, sport, sporting directors, clearly, well, listen, I spoke to Edu, he's like, it's us together that makes the decisions. So it needs to be someone who's who's fully involved and gets it. Um, very progressive. Um but I think Arteta is quite a strong character as well. Um, and let's be honest, he gets his own way in that structure, man. Exactly. I, I, I very much doubt where we, where, you know, Raya's worked out. But when we were going for Raya off the back of Ramsdale's form, mm. I was happy with Calafuri, but we had bare left backs. Obviously, Kai Havertz for 65 million. When you've got Declan Rice, I think everyone unanimously agrees that takes us to the next level. I'm talking specifically the boardroom, right? I think them other players I mentioned, there had to have been some that are for it, some are against it. And as you see when you read the Athletic, Arteta has pushed it. So it's like, as much as I get at Edu, how much of your job can you really do? Because I think when it comes to it, Arteta is the one that gets his way. And you could argue yeah. he should be the gaffer. He gets his way. Um, he definitely gets his way because, for, listen, you need to go back to Amazon documentary, Aubameyang. Uh, Edu was actually, Another point. He, was, he was against him saying, shut him out. We don't want to see him. I don't want to talk. Eddie was like, oh, I've got to try and make this work. And then Arteta was like, oh, he's, he's not having Arteta it. Arteta said and, did that. And, and in right. the end, yeah, and in the end, it, it, we saw what happened. He he was gone. He was done. So Arteta definitely gets his way. <laughs> he's, there, there's no doubt about that. As much as Edu, he, he said to me personally, he's like, we as a group, we decide. I can see when Arteta has, has a certain opinion or, or, you know, something he wants, he gets it. So 
interesting. The person that comes in, I think it's Ole, Ole, I think that's how you pronounce his name. But he's Ole, the, Ole, Ole, yeah, yeah, the, he's, he's the one that is the one that bro in Spanish there. influence. If Arteta gets his man, you see the exactly. culture stuff, you see Rayo. If he gets him, boy, he's he's the one, he's the one I think that that is the most likely. I just think. Again, I don't want no like I heard Rosiski was being mentioned and yeah, yeah I mean, I'm Murtaza like, we're moving loud, 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 that's F football F manager stuff, man. F all that blood. I'm sorry. Big up you, man. as players, but please listen. Having Mikel Arteta enough, and and that's not even a, in a negative way, bro. He's ex, he's doing well. Let's it's not too much romance him. around it. I had yeah, someone in my chat said get Omri, and I was like, I love Omri, but what credentials nah, have you nah, got nah. as a sporting director, bro? Nah, 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 nah. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to ruin no, 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 not saying some of the other players had like huge legacies compared to Thierry, but I don't want to ruin anyone else's. Yeah, man, just think to be in a fan, Thierry. Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, I don't want any of that. Um, and again, yeah, you don't want to romantic, uh, romantic stories of yeah, the player, uh, the ex players coming back because Arteta, I believe, actually pushes that to the players anyway. I've heard that he's got all the he's got all the sayings, all the old winners on the walls. David Seaman spoke about it. He goes, every time I'm at the training ground, like. We, it's very evident. It's very evident that you know we've had success in the past, and it's and there's a thing that says it's now your time um, to create history and all these things. So we don't need any of that. They gather enough of that around the ground. We don't need ex players anymore. So um, yeah, I just think the sport director just needs to be someone that supports it. But again, yeah, it can be. Do you want someone to challenge Arteta? That's the question. Or do you want yes and no? Because I'm, I'm not going to be naive. I do think Edu and Arteta naturally not when I say butt heads, it don't mean RG barge. It's like me and you. If we went through the players, for instance, I might say something like I don't rate Kivy, or you might, but we can yeah. come to some sort of middle ground. So I do think that's going on. But I do think there needs to. I, I do think Arteta is getting a bit too much power. I can't really comment on what I don't see. But yeah. you know, you've if if I'm honest, you know, you've come into this as a novice manager. You've been allowed to. You've had great success in some regards you've been allowed to fail where certain people wasn't you've been allowed to make certain signings and they've not worked out and then sign again i think isolated to how we've controlled the budget or certain positions you haven't in the last couple of years or the last two summers you haven't necessarily did everything that sometimes just do conventional things to get us to win the prem as much as i like that he's reinventing the wheel not all the time do you need to do that and it's like if you keep getting your way in this modern structure then we're going to live or die by your successes. And obviously, the more he gets his way, the more influence, the harder it is to get rid of someone if you're not doing your job. If I'm honest, like, how much can he take on as a novice manager? Like, you're, yeah. do, you it's think mad. The board, do you think the board or the owners sorry, had any influence in him not getting, say, that strike? But do you think yeah. he got fully backed? Or do you think, because I, I think he probably did. I, I'm trying to, every time, when we go to America, we speak to the Cronkies, they say, like, they fully back him and they give him what he needs. But I'm just trying to just be like, I'm trying to think. Because again, yeah, you're right. There must be someone in, in the direct in the sporting director who comes in and says, "Look, bro, we get, this team clearly needs a striker." Um, so yeah, but I, I don't know if I don't know if that's because the board haven't backed him getting a striker or not. But I'm assuming they must have though. Sixty five. Right, rightly or wrongly, to answer your question, Cecil. Like, obviously, we spent money in the summer, right? And I think when you look beyond the when you look coming out of that summer, yeah, we got some good individuals, but it wasn't inspiring to think we, you know, we've got them extra percentages yeah. to fight City. I do think rightly or wrongly, though, in that where you look at the Cronkies, they get the people in place, they kind of leave you to their own devices, and they're like a fly on the wall listening to stuff. I personally think they said, I'm not gonna lie, Arteta, I hear you, but you lot have spent some money. You haven't really got the best in terms of outgoings and all of that. Yeah. I genuinely think they've said, this is what you have to work with. You lot need to work on sales because you lot have swindled the peas where you Fair. look at Lacongas and Fabio Fair. Vieira's and, you know, th there's been a lot of, of shift. Now, I don't think it's necessarily Arteta or Arteta's fault that Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko haven't banged. I think the system just left them. But they could argue you haven't got too much bang for your buck out of that. We brought Tommy Asu, who couldn't stay fit. You've got Kivio. You're telling us about another defender in Calafuri. I just think they haven't me i think they just haven't i think edu and arteta haven't managed the budget correctly if i'm honest if, yeah. if that, that's the, that's how i would look at it but then no, you can it. argue the caveat of the cronkies like do you not want to be winners then or are you just happy to be in the champs because you could argue bro since we've had these last two years or three well yeah no two years in the champions league i think the cronkies may be taking their foot off the gas i don't think arteta has i only question how arteta is going about winning the title but yeah. it feels like we're getting into that scenario of champions league football we're kind of complacent yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you, and 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 I think both both arguments are right. What you're saying, I think, that, yeah, he, he's he's still he seems like he's still keen to obviously 
get success for the club. That's all he talks about. But yeah, um, they, they he has spent money at the end of the day and some things haven't worked. I think the sales thing was definitely spot on what you said there. They definitely had an emphasis on getting players that, that, that are rotting away in the club, get them out, find a way, find a fee, get them on loan, whatever. That was that was a clear, clear priority, this this that this last window that's just gone. Um, but yeah, the going forward, you need to you need to push and a sporting director that if I'm being real, oh, I don't know. Because all the signings we make, the, all the players, every player mentions how well Arteta speaks. And as soon as you sit in a room with him, you're bought, you, you buy into what he's telling you. Being at a press conference, bro, I believe that. I don't think it's lip service because I've been at Arteta conference and he does have that aura where you kind of want to listen to him and like he seems like a very interesting person. Facts, facts, facts. And you can believe and you can buy into what he's saying. So... That is key. I, the only reason why I brought it up is because I, I wanted to know, like, I'm trying to think, does Edu and that, is that a big part to why players sign? I think Edu obviously scouts or finds the players and then Arteta will see and, and if he agrees with the client. Nah, and then just dotting I's and crossing T's, bro, if I'm yeah. honest with you. Yeah, Maybe if it's a Brazilian, Don, he might be able to add to it, but... I uh, hear yeah. you, I hear you. That's the thing. I, I don't know if, I don't think he's the one doing the whole getting the player really to put the pen to paper because Declan Rice always talks about how, listen, once I spoke about Arteta, I knew... This is where I wanted to be. He, All like, of them, he's, like he's, you said, so, yeah. yeah. Literally, he's like they, he sold me the 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 dream and that. So, so yeah. So I don't know. The sport director, if I'm honest, doesn't have. He's not. He's gonna have obviously an impact, but I'm not. I'm not fixated really on 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 who we bring in as long as it's not a, a dunce. If I'm gonna say that, but if I'm being real, I think Arteta won't allow it to be. It won't be no one that that doesn't. That's gonna basically. Uh, fold should he or, have that much of a say though? Because like you just said, Mikel Arteta wouldn't allow wouldn't allow it to be. It's where we should are. He have a say like that. It's where we are, and the reason why I say it is because the Cronkies really they really buy in to Arteta. To I'm doing, not, yeah. like, brother, every time I speak to them, they're like whatever Arteta. They're very much like because I feel like not that they not that he saved them, but well, well, well. He, Arteta he did, was a big he part of what bringing There's been no protest since Arteta has been the gaffer. He definitely saved some of that, it. And, and as much as they will never admit that, I think they really appreciate that. So, they, so whatever he wants, I feel like they're kind of like, just do it because listen, look what he's done for us so far. I know we haven't won anything, but from an Arsenal fan and being inside the nucleus, you know that like they are just going to do whatever he wants. And, and you're right, should he have that much power? That's another conversation. I. Phew, well, we haven't won any. If you're winning constantly and getting success, yes, but he hasn't got that now. So this he is hasn't what I'm got saying. So potentially, this is why it gets to a point where you get to a stage where it's like, brother, we've you've had everything. <laughs> you, you, this we, is what everyone, I'm saying. Leaves, everyone trusts you. You have to deliver. So if you don't understand, the only way really is to go. So that so, and I've actually kind of come to terms with that on this video. It's a big up. Uh, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that's that's how it is in the club. I think. They very much trust him, the, the owners. So he gets what he wants. And it, that's fine, all well and good. But you have to bring success with that. So this is probably the final year. Maybe not for the... I'll be honest, maybe not for the Cronkies. They might... Nah, be, they're definitely not. They've they shown that to, they won't listen and make popular yeah, decisions. Some of works, I mean. Exactly. So I think it'll be a very long time till they really are convinced to get rid of him. But yeah, I think he has got a lot of power. That can be actually at our detriment, if I'm being real. But we, I don't know yet until... This end of season, I I I I need to see. There's no for me. There's no. You have to see silverware this season. And even though the goalposts will move with the silverware, but you need to get silverware. Whether silverware, it's the league cup, to, FA cup, by God's grace, Premier League champs, you have to. I'm not even being that 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 obnoxious. Has to be the made two majors, brother. Silverware. Your name or Arsenal's name needs it's to be there because people can say yeah. you got the same legacy as Ten Hag or Ten Hag's won more trophies that, and look and, like and I hear that that is a factual argument, even though the club was in the they're in complete completely different places, and I'd rather be where we are as fans. One hundred percent. I'm telling you that none none of the narratives run until in the end of the season if we don't if we're not lifting. I'm not seeing armpits from players, bro. Because hey, there's going to be some. There'll be some even from me. Not as again, I will never be the the crate the but man, t-shirts and all that banners and all that. But I'll be definitely asking questions and and rightly so because. You have everything, brother. You have all the power. Um, even in press conferences, I even hear you don't really talk about I haven't had this back in or I, we've had we struggled here. It's all about, you know, whether it's the referees or, or situations. And he keeps, I know it's lip service, but he keeps saying the Cronkies are back me. So exactly. I know it's lip service. You're not going to get your employers, but you're saying yeah, well, it. Then, you know. then if you're saying it, bro, we got to go from all your words. So yeah, it's on you, brother. And it, I think he knows that, but. Then understand the pressure and 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 the consequences. All right. that comes from it. You have to. You have to. You have to understand that. And 
it, it, it aligns with when we're at the stadiums and sometimes the team start flat at home and or away even away and and he's is like oh the energy from the fans he doesn't always he doesn't he doesn't um he doesn't complain about them but he, they'll say like when when they're loud and it transmits and all that it all comes from what you what you guys do is we exactly. we all react from what you guys do you're the guys that are kind of the leaders of this team you so, lot paint the narrative man there you go so it, there's a lot of pressure on that because that's what that's your job to do it and we follow so yeah man it wow well, i've actually come to terms with a lot of things in this <laughs> in this life but boy it's good it's now good. you're bang on the money man and to relate it to people who don't know what we're going to it's like obviously cecil works with robbie right is if if, if cecil goes to robbie i need this camera i need this mic mm. you know i need these tickets i want to interview this i want creative control of that let me do this let me do that robbie might say you know what you're talented at what you do cecil do your thing but if you don't deliver, if the interviews are rubbish, if you're not asking the right questions, if one day you're at it and then you're not, naturally, yo, Cecil, you might have to go. It's as simple yeah. as that. Like, this That's is you, this way. is what comes with it, bro. It's a great way to look at it. Like, Brother, it's as simple if as If I that, get back, yeah, if I've got a full back in and I don't provide, it's only right you get questions asked. And it's and if anything, you have to sometimes go, especially if you really take the take the take the pee. So um as in take the piss so yeah man that's a good that's a very good way to look at it very good way to look at it and and, and that, it even gives me more clarity on the whole situation bro when when the higher ups are giving you the backing you've got to provide and and yes you're very good at what you do we're aware of that and we can commend you for that but then when you get more and more trust and more backing from everyone and you've got it all you have to deliver because what, what other excuse could you have you can't right. it's you so yeah this man. is what's jarring Obviously, I know you're pressed for 10 minutes, so I've got a Go last on. couple of things for you. Yeah, we I can't not have you here with one minute. You know, Ben White was out for four to six weeks. Apparently, he's out for 10 to 12 weeks now, where you're relying on Califuri and Timber who've had their issues now. And these are the games, you know, Forest, Sporting, West Ham, United, Fulham, Monaco, Everton, a double header against Crystal Palace, Ipswich, Brentford, Brighton, Spurs, Villa, Dynamo, Wolves, Girona, and City. This is the prospect of what Benjamin White's missing out. How do you feel about that? And obviously, we got well, it's gone now, but Declan Rice was, you know, broken toe, playing with issues against Chelsea. What have you made of the injury kind of outlook on our team? We can't pay players to stay fit now, man. No, you can't, but it happens. It's football. Um, being very aware of it. I think Ben White was pushed, pushed to, yeah. They known about that, man. They've known he's needed to have this, surgery, this is, So I'm just trying to, yeah, I'm trying to think how to work. I think it was pushed to take time to go and, to go and get this surgery because, again, the reason why I believe Again, I'm no ITK. I have no inside information, but it was early. It was quicker re return time because I think they were going to just manage it. But now they're like, because he, he he openly admits he plays for injury all the well other players he lies about like, being in not being injured all, so he can yeah. play as well. The man's a spot. We've heard about this for so, years. So what I think is, I think it's a long term injury that he just was just managing, and then they're just like, look, let's just get it fixed. Take the time out. Just go and go and rest. Go and go and take do the surgery and recover properly instead of just managing it playing through injury loud out so i think they waited i actually think they waited until calafuri was back as well i think i think it was all uh, especially just this is just for ben white by the way he need tommy to stay fit he, yeah he he needs yeah we need him safe i was with screw but i think they'll just again it's because this is all allegedly but i think they're just waiting for him to calafuri to be available um and back from his injuries so they can get ben white go and actually have full surgery and full recovery point. um i believe that declan rice the broken toe i spoke about this before but i played with a broken toe it's not it, like even when i was at a club like it depends what toe. If it's a big toe, it's different. If it's like I don't know, a pink or middle of one of the middle toes, you can play through a broken. You just strap them together. You can play through a broken toe. It's not that deep. If I'm being I'm making him take dead balls and said, "Oh, I dead, I'd set pieces." Still though, he's yes, killing his toe. I'm saying, bro, but but I'll be real. Like you can play. It's not that. It's not that deep playing through with a broken. Depending on, again, depending on what toe it is, it's not that deep playing through with a broken toe. The only thing is, it can't get time to heal if you're constantly playing. So yeah. I don't know how they manage that. Um, obviously, it's an international break right now, and he's got a he got a week off. It might give a bit more time to because again, I don't think I don't know what the I don't think for, for a broken toe, depending on what toe is, the procedure is only just rest, leave it ice, let the swelling go down, and let it kind of naturally fix itself. So, um, from what from my knowledge, when I had my broken toe, so yeah, I mean that's that's standard, that's standard, that's standard. He'll 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 be back and he'll be fine. Um, we shame for Kudis and Isaac, man. We've been linked with that? both of them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both my dream. Yeah, right. Do you know what? I, I just read the title of this video. 
is that Arsenal's top target for success? Like, that's what they're... oh well, I removed it, but that's again, I don't want to endorse or condemn the ITKs because we've heard whether it's the ITKs or you know the Daily Mail, we we've been hearing this. We want these yeah. players and all these things. It's it, whether we sign them in January or the summer, I don't know, but we're in November, they can't help us in what's left of this year. But well, I think I think you want Isaac. I think you're cool with Kudis yeah, as well. The, the, these, I'll be honest, they don't look glamorous, but to me, these are dream signs. I want Isaac over everyone. P people, this is on record everywhere. Absolutely. Even for the Newcastle game, I said he's auditioning for Arsenal. For me, scored ahead, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll I'll take, I'll I'll and I got I got caned by Matty Rents and the Newcastle man by saying, "Oh, how did the audition go?" I said, "Yeah." Fucking smashed the audition. He done well, but it's just a giant that came at our expense. But don't forget, Rice auditioned against us when when they. I'm sure they beat yeah, us yeah, a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, he beat us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, your audition. Yeah, facts. So Isak for me is my number one target. People say Gokarez. I'll say a load of other strikers for me. Isak just he just seems like an Arsenal player to me. Um, again though, and and no, do you know why? And also because he won't have to change too much of the system and the style of play for him to bed into this team. I think if we go for an out and out Gokhres sort of striker, you have to kind of accommodate to that and change a little bit. I think Arteta can get Isak in his team and not have to manipulate too much of the way we're playing. Yes, Isak might have to manip um, occupy the middle of the pitch instead of drift over to the right right side and help out the wingers. However, he does that very well, going to drifting out and helping Thanks. wide wide play. So for me, his prime target Kudos as well. James bangs on about him and says he's the night he should be our number one target. He's um, but he'd, he'd benefit him. Um, him should have got him when we got I when we when he was at Ajax. So I'll be honest. Yeah. 100%. Um, he's a quality player. My kind of knowledge that I can add to this stream that people may not know, when we went to Ghana, obviously we met with one of his, I'll be honest, it's, it's a guy that represents him, shall we say, um, um, Kudos, him and um, Thomas Partey. We spoke, I spoke to him in Ghana. He's also likes Arsenal, um, Kudos as well. So, you have to come out of London, bro. Come so, join us. Call so, Declarez. Invite so, yeah, Arteta over. Let's make it happen. Exactly. So really, it's kind of on... If I'm honest, it, from where I'm, where I'm standing right now, and from what I think about, so it, money all, too, all, yeah, all it really is on is the clubs letting these players go, and how much money you confront. So it's more, I think, it's more in our shoes rather than you know them staying. I think it's more on what we do to get those sort of players. And if we do, I'd be extremely happy, extremely happy. Bang on the money, Cecil, man. And obviously, I know you're pressed for time. you got a meeting. So I think that was the best way to wrap this up. As usual, okay. it's always fun talking about Arsenal. I've got a lot more from what you said to ponder about Arsenal. And I think I'm more in a decent headspace. I don't know if that's going to persist with Nottingham Forest. But yeah, let people know they can find you. Not that you need that, but go on. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm in a, I'm in a pretty good headspace. I'm probably because I've got I've actually got a bit of time to have a bit of a break, even though today I'm back to back on meetings. But yeah, I well said. After this live, I feel like I've just kind of spoken out what's kind of in my mind and I feel better let's just hope like you said not enough, it could be a, this could change in an instance as soon as we're back but we'll see um Cecil underscore G J double E that is and then Cecil C C I O you know it's a, if you see me you see me you know how it goes um but yeah love everyone again always love to the people listening and following make sure you subscribe and like and hit up deluded all the time man he does great content so thank you bro. come on my guy it's always lovely to be here with you Cecil tell Robbie to answer his phone I've been pestering him I need to make my return to AFTV we're, we're letting the fans know we're putting Robbie on blast but yeah enjoy your meeting my guy don't forget to follow people and yeah man bless man hopefully Forrest we got three points lad man in a bit love <laughs> in a bit <laughs> Like...